to a student and joining you from students. Today we are going to be talking about the ocean habitat. As most of you know, this is my favorite habitat, so I'm very excited to be talking about this one today. <clears throat> As you can see, I have my mask and snorkel on, and I'm ready to go diving underwater. I have my snorkel up here that lays above the water so I can breathe. My mask so I can look in under the water multiple fish and stuff. So today we're going to be talking about the ocean habitat as well as freshwater habitats. We're going to learn the difference between the two. Our standard is to recognize that living things are only able to live in their habitats that meet their basic needs. Here's our objective, our essential question, and our vocabulary. to go to the beach and learn about the ocean. Most of our planet is covered by salt water and our oceans and seas. The ocean is divided into different zones according to how much sunlight it receives. The living things in each zone have different ways to survive in their environment. What is the sunlit zone? The sunlit zone is the top part of the ocean. Here, enough light goes through the water to allow plants to grow. Tiny living things called phytoplankton use sunlight to make their own food, kind of like plants. Animals, such as krill, eat the phytoplankton. Then bigger fish and larger animals like dolphins eat the krill. Right, Moby. Phytoplankton play an important part in many ocean food chains and food webs. The sunlit zone is home to many different living things. Coral reefs are also found in the sunlit zone. Coral is an animal that grows a very hard skeleton. Tons of animals live in coral reefs, including fish, eels, and mollusks. Most marine life is in the sunlit zone, but it's actually the smallest zone. What is the twilight zone? The twilight zone is below the sunlit zone. Less light gets through the water. Some animals can go back and forth between the sunlit and twilight zones, including the sperm whale and swordfish. Cuttlefish also live in the mm -hmm. twilight zone. As you go further away from the surface, less light gets through the water. It also gets colder and colder. As you go deeper, fewer plants and animals can survive. What is the midnight zone? The midnight zone is the deepest part of the ocean and it's also the largest zone. No sunlight can reach the midnight zone, but living things like this Dumbo octopus have adapted to life here. Food can be difficult to find in this zone. So some fish, like this fang tooth, have large mouths so they can grab and eat anything. Anglerfish have a special body part that lights up. This light attracts prey. Many deep sea animals have parts that are bioluminescent, which means they can glow to attract prey or scare off predators. The ocean floor is a dark and rocky place. There are even vents in the Earth's crust. The vents give off heat and chemicals, and tiny living things called bacteria feed on the chemicals. 
Some animals rely on the vents and the bacteria to survive, like these tube worms. There are even deep sea crabs and mussels. Most of the planet is covered by oceans, but our oceans are changing. How are ocean habitats changing? When people pollute the environment, it cause problems for many living things. Even garbage in our communities can sometimes end up in our oceans. <coughs> in fact, there's a growing patch of trash in the middle of the Pacific Ocean that's bigger than the state of Texas. It's important to clean up after yourself and recycle. This simple act can help protect our environment. In many parts of the world, overfishing is a big problem. This is causing certain kinds of fish to become endangered. It's important to protect our oceans because so many living things rely on them to survive. You can research and write to government leaders and tell them about our changing oceans. You could also help keep beaches and communities clean. You can also start or join a club to share what you learn with other people. There are many ways to get involved. Anyway, Moby, I can't wait to go to the beach. You're going to surf to the beach? You can't do that. There's no water. The habitat we are talking about today is the ocean, my favorite. An ocean is very large and filled with salt water. Many different kinds of plants and animals live in the ocean. Here we have some coral, a starfish, um, some sea turtles, a shark, a manta ray, some more fish and coral, and some same over here, and a stingray, my favorite, absolute favorite animal down here, our stingray. I'm Cassie and I am 11 years old. I live in Key Largo, Florida. Down here. And I wanna show you the coral reefs of Key Largo, Florida. This is a saltwater marine biome. Salt determines what lives here and what doesn't. This whole entire place is made out of coral rock. Coral is an ancient life that has been around for millions of years. The Florida Keys are actually coral themselves. You can't dig a hole here because there's no dirt. A big coral rock we know it's brain coral by the lines in here. This is very old, all fossilized. This is a 45 foot catamaran and it's used for diving trips. salt water. Coral reefs tend to grow in warmer waters and temperatures between 75 and 85 degrees. It's kind of murky out, but... The reef also becomes a habitat to many other living things. Without living coral, the fish and other animals will be. Hello again. We really need to take care of this environment or we won't have it for anybody else to come see and enjoy.
freshwater habitats, we learn about our saltwater habitats. Our ocean habitat is very large, filled with saltwater, lots of plants and animals in it. Our freshwater habitat is filled with fresh water, so there's usually not any salt in our water, and there are also different types of plants and animals that live in the water. These two habitats have water, but they are very different. 